Hi and welcome to a new video and also quite unusual video because this will be a tutorial for Adobe Rush which is kind of a light version of Adobe Premiere when it comes to video editing. Personally I use Adobe Premiere for the videos we are shooting for my YouTube channel but Adobe Rush is a much simpler version of Adobe Premiere and if you're new to this, if you want to, I don't know, become a YouTuber or if you have some video projects for example at university at school or I don't know you have to do some uh, video at home maybe for a wedding or whatever then Adobe Rush could be a much simpler entry into video editing than Adobe Premiere because there's a ton less features than on Adobe Premiere um, but it's a lot easier to use as well. This is also a sponsored video by MSI. MSI did a cooperation with Adobe. They wanted me to do this tutorial to show you how you can work with Adobe Rush and get used to video editing basics. Before we start I will just give you an overview or a comparison of Adobe Premiere to Adobe Rush. Just a quick first look. This is how Adobe Premiere looks like. On the left side we have all kinds of adjustments to the video settings like size and position. Bottom left we have the media browser. On the bottom in the center we have all the different timelines and audio lines and all this kind of stuff. You can see multiple audio and video lines stacked above. In the middle we have the preview window and on the right for example we can adjust brightness, contrast, saturations, all kind of effect. Now here's Adobe Rush and you will straight notice that it looks a lot more simple. We still have the audio and video timelines on the bottom. We have the preview on the middle and for example if we double click on the video at this moment we also get the additional settings on the right as before in Adobe Premiere but everything is a lot more simple, less features but easier to start with video editing. Let's just start right away. I opened Adobe Rush and click create new project. Just give it any kind of name. Thermal paste tutorial and then we just select the files which I put in a folder called it Rush material and then using one video file. Those are all the video files I have for the video I plan to cut so it's just some basic video material I rec uh, recorded for this tutorial. Starting with the intro, personally I always only load one file for the beginning, not all of them. I will show you why that's the case. In Adobe Rush we have the video right here and if you load all the videos at once they will be all lined up in a row. It can be quite confusing for the start so just start with your first video part. That's the easiest. I also straight advise that you click expand audio otherwise you cannot see your audio line down there. And then you should also click control tracks which gives you additional control over your audio and video tracks. For example you can uh, lock the um, individual video tracks right here. You can mute and unmute them depending on what you're currently cutting. That can be quite useful. Also hide the current uh, video track right here. Can be multiple tracks um, stacked above and below. I will show you how this works. But let's just start with an example of this first video. This is just a typical intro video the way I record my videos and sometimes when I just start recording my videos are typically I just mix up some words in the beginning and then I have to cut out those parts from the beginning or there is something you want to hide um, from the video. Let's take a look. Hi and welcome to a new video. In today's video... No, wait, there was something I had to do first. Uh, okay. Yeah, much better. Yeah, okay, so that's something um, I definitely have to hide. That's nothing that should be publicly visible. You just move your cursor to where, wherever you want to cut your video, then you press S, delete. Hi and welcome to a new video. In today's video we are going to talk about thermal paste application. Yeah, that's, that's much better. Then we have the video right here, we have the audio down and there. Let's just perform a double click on the video file itself. In this menu you can change all kind of stuff from the video like the size, the position of that. We, get, we will get to that in a bit. Um, for audio you can click on this button right here and there's some stuff um, I want to show you, especially auto volume. Um, you should always, at least from my personal opinion, uncheck this one because this will lead to Adobe Rush 
automatically adjusting your, auto vo uh, your volume of the video clip to always have the same kind of sound level uh, through the whole um, clip. But I would personally recommend not to use this option. If there's anything you have to make louder or more quiet, you should use the clip volume up here. If there's anything you have to change from the clip, let's say it was shot at low light or you have to do some kind of color correction, you click on this button up here. There are also some filters right here, which are more like Instagram stuff. Wouldn't recommend to use this, but if you go to edit, you can, for example, change exposure, contrast, shadows and highlights is quite useful depending on what you want to do. Also, saturation can be quite nice uh, if you're taking close-up shots and stuff like that. So all those kind of options you can find in the color correction uh, menu. Let's add a second clip to this. Go to the media browser and we will use the second clip, which is the paste application. Just drag it in here. You can drag it anywhere. It will automatically align to the first clip. Location. Thermal paste application is really, really important because if you don't use enough, it's not good, especially not for me. No, Thermal Grizzly. That's why I'm going to show you how much you have to use. Okay, that's our second clip right here. Again, first thing I do is uncheck auto volume. I really don't want to use the automatic auto uh, correct from the audio, but that's personal preference. You can try, maybe that's uh, a thing for you. But so between those two clips, if you just pl uh, press play, you see there's a very hard cut. And to prevent those hard cuts, you have transitions, which are on the top right here. There are different transitions. You have cross, dis cross dissolve, dip to black and dip to white. Dip to black and dip to white is more like a uh, thing for like intro, outro, I would say. And cross dissolve is something I personally use quite often between two scenes to have like a, a smooth tr transition uh, within the clips. But you can also just press Control and D and in this case, you already have the transition right here. That's across the solve. application. Thermal paste looks much smoother. You can also double click on here and then you can set the duration of the transition um, if you want to make it shorter or longer. Same goes for the intro because uh, I selected the whole clip and pressed Control D. Hi and welcome. You can see it's also a smooth transition for the intro. Now let's say we have some annotations we want to make for this clip or something I did a mistake, we press on the title right here. Then you have different titles you can select. You can also search the database from Adobe, which is quite useful. For example, we can try the basic uh, title right here or basic default title. Just drag it down here. To talk there we have the title film. already. Now you double click on the title, select it. Then you get the options top here. You can change the font, you can change color, size, whatever. You can also obviously just write whatever. Line to make it more visible. Ah, select it first, maybe. Yeah. By the way, yeah, Linus makes really nice uh, hoodies. Can only recommend them. It's not sponsored, that's just a joke, but the hoodie is seriously nice. All right. Um, okay, so we have the two clips here. Let's uh, add the third clip, which would include the thermal paste application. Again, just drag it in here. How much you have to use. Okay, so you can hear basically nothing, not much is going on. That's why in this case I would just add a little bit of music underneath the video. I have a clip right here which I took from the YouTube music database. Push it down here. You can listen to the I'm going music. to show you how much you have to use. Okay, for this position, the volume of the music is, is quite okay, but at the beginning, where there was still the end of the, of the other clip, I couldn't really he hear or understand myself. That's why you do a double click on this one. And then you have this quite nice option, also disable auto volume, but there's auto duck. Auto duck is a quite cool feature because it will lower the volume automatically of your music clip w while you're talking. So you can see that right here, the music volume is lowered. That's why I'm going to show you how much you have to use. Yeah, and when we get to the thermal place application, 
volume is increased. Okay, we cannot really see much, that's why we just perform a cut right here. Double click on this clip and uh, increase the size. So we zoom in a little bit, change position, so you can see a little bit more. Yeah, that's quite cool. Now, let's assume we have a second camera right here, which I did. So let's take this clip, put it above. Now you see this clip was shot in 1080p, while my main camera is always using 4K because I have one 4K camera, one 1080p camera, which is cheaper for additional second or close-up shots. In this case, we just increase again the size to 200%. Now we can see the same right here. The only thing that is, or the only thing I dislike about Adobe Rush is the fact that you cannot split up the audio from the video file, which is an extremely important feature in my eyes and something I'm really miss missing in Rush. But otherwise, Rush is really straightforward and for just basic video editing, let's say you're streaming something and you want to record it and afterwards shoot some highlight videos out of this, Adobe Rush is extremely simple because you just import the clips, line them up and you're good to go. Let's get back a little bit and talk about the hardware because currently I'm using X570 Ace from MSI with a 3800X AMD Ryzen, the CPU you all know, which has eight cores and an MSI 5700XT Evoke graphics card. And a lot of people always think if you have to do video editing, you need like, I don't know, a 32 core CPU, you need a 2080 Ti, but that's really not the case. Even this, it's a 4K video, obviously adding some additional 1080p footage, but you see playback absolutely smooth, no issues whatsoever. If you click on view on top, there is preview quality and in my case it's even set to high. Even at high it's completely smooth preview quality with a 5700 XT. So you don't need to invest in RTX Titan if you just do very basic video editing. This is completely fine. You also don't need a 3900X or a 3950X. Even a 3600X would be absolutely fine for editing this video. We can take a quick look into the task manager. Well, oh, let's just mute the music for now. And also mute this. Well, memory usage is increasing while you keep using the playback, which you can see it's now hitting 85% almost yeah, 10 gigabyte was used. So in this case, I'm using 16 gigabyte of memory total, which is sufficient, um, but it's on the limit. For video editing, I would personally rather um, advise to use like 32 gigabyte because nowadays yeah, memory is quite cheap. So maybe I wouldn't save on there, but you really don't need a 12 core or 16 core CPU for editing because for the playback, you only need uh, like fairly strong GPU like the 5700 XT Evoke but uh, you don't need a 2080 Ti for this kind of very basic video editing. Obviously if you go deeper into it you might step up your game or if you do a lot of effects but for this very basic uh, video editing that's absolutely fine. Let's get to finish our video. Let's assume that we want to cut off the video right here end it with the main clip on the bottom. You can just use your mouse and drag the video file to the end, same goes to your music, makes cutting really smooth and easy. This is our clip right now. Now you go to share and you can share it. For example, you can share it directly to Instagram or YouTube, which is something I would not advise to do. I would just render it to your drive and then upload it manually. It gives you more options and more freedom. On advanced settings, you have different presets. For example, YouTube um, 4K preset, there's nothing else you have to adjust. It's a perfect setting for uh, good quality, there will be no quality loss if you upload this to YouTube. Now the only thing you have to do is click export and then you have to wait. In this case it's only 30 seconds and this part is where most of the CPU is used. This is very low GPU usage but very high CPU usage and that's also where you can see differences between CPUs. Let's just take a look at benchmarks. For example, those are benchmarks done for a typical 4K video I'm recording for my YouTube channel. In this case it was edited with Adobe Rush. 
And you can see with an 8700K, which is using six cores, it took 21 minutes to finally render the video. With the 9900K and the 3800X, pretty much the same time, about 16 minutes. Those are both eight core CPUs. A little bit overclocking on the 3800X saves you like 20 to 30 seconds. Going to a higher core count, for example, the 14 core i9 9940XE, uh, again, saves you about three minutes. And the fastest in my benchmark was the 3900X AMD 12 core CPU. Qu quite impressive how well those AMD Ryzen CPUs behave uh, with Adobe Rush and also Adobe Premiere. It's quite cool. You can see um, the 12 core AMD beats the 14 core Intel. Um, that's really quite impressive, but it also shows you that you only save a little bit of time. It really depends how often you're performing rendering applications, like how often are you editing a video and rendering a video like this. If you do this once per week and you're rendering a video and you save like three minutes, personally, I don't think it justifies taking a 3900X over a 3700X. I mean, you just save four minutes. Obviously, if you do that on a daily basis, like I do, like let's say you render a video three or four times per day with a very long uh, rendering time, then it could be worth getting a 3900X or even a 3950X. But that's up to you to decide what you're going to do with this. So much about the Adobe Rush tutorial. Make sure you check out the link in the description below because if you're getting one of those MSI graphics cards, which are totally sufficient for even 4K video playback, you get three months of Adobe Rush for free. So make sure you check out the link in the description below. Thanks for joining in. And if you have any questions about rendering, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for joining in. See you next time. Bye.